know what's going on, James. They say you're finished. What do you think? I think you're just getting started. Starfall, of course, was huge. Massive success with the critics. First billion dollar Bond movie. A brace of Oscars. How much pressure to top that? There was no pressure at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a fair amount of pressure. But you know, there was a huge pressure last time as well. Um, and it's just that the pressure is really the expectations of, of fans, you know, and the audience. That's the most important part of it, rather than defining success, you know, with awards and even reviews. It's really about whether people will embrace it, uh, people who love Bond and, and the people who've never seen Bond, you know, equally. You must know by now that the double O program is officially dead. What an interesting character this Bond villain is. He always has been far more interesting than Bond himself, wouldn't you say? Why did you come? I came here to kill you. And I thought you came here to die. I very strongly believe in, in this, in this, you know, the, you have the leading character and you have the supporting character. Um, without support, the leading character couldn't lead because he needs something to lead. Um, but, but it still is um, his adventure, you know, we, we're, supposed to, we're supposed to root for the hero. <laughs> character in this movie is much more proactive. In Skyfall he was playing catch up the whole time, from the moment he was shot at the beginning. In a way he was, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty grim movie for Bond, you know, mm. and, and you could argue at the end of Skyfall he's failed, you know, he hasn't saved M's life. Um, she's died, you know, on his watch. Um, and this movie is a completely different feeling. It's, it's, a, it's apples and oranges really. And because of the mood he's in, and because he's much more proactive, he's much more energized in the film, it's much easier to inject a bit of comedy and a bit of mischief into it. And I think that's something that I hope people will love. Ever since 62, um, Bond is a fixture of popular culture. Ah, when you say, hmm, uh, Goldfinger, and immediately you evoke the era. Or you say, um, you know, Octopussy. You're right there, right in the 70s. You, 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 know, you know Roger Moore and, and everything that's connected to it. The title Spectre and so many elements are really mining Bond's past. Mm. How important is that to Bond himself and the audience, in a way? Well, I think the game you play with Bond is that you're all aware of the iconography you know you're all aware of the parts of the bond myth it's 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 a contemporary myth you know that's one of the wonderful things about it and part of the challenge is to be able to use some of those things from his past in a new and fresh way to make it both contemporary and classic to be, make it both retro and you know cutting edge if you can um, and so for me the big challenge was to take the big shadows from his past the big organization from his past perhaps some of the great figures from his past, the great villains from his past, uh, and knit them into something that felt fresh and new. The last time we spoke here, three years ago, uh, about Skyfall, you said you'd given everything to that movie <laughs> and you couldn't in any way see yourself coming back to do another Bond film. What was it about this storyline, this cast, that drew you back in again? Well, I felt like the MI6 brigade that I'd cast, you know, a new M, a new Q, a new Money Penny. I felt like they were, you know, I felt possessive about them. You know, I wanted to tell the next stage of their story. But also I had these two or three other big ideas about drawing all of Bond's, all of Daniel's uh, movies to this one point, to, to creating a supervillain rather than just a villain, you know. Uh, and, um, and also telling the second half of his childhood, really, and what happened after he was orphaned. All of those things made me feel like I wanted to tell the story and when I thought about someone else doing it I felt jealous and I thought well that's silly you know I should just get on and do it um, so uh, and I'm, I'm really pleased that I did I'm very proud of it. Shall we get started? <laughs>